Hey everyone, it's Mark, the founder of Veteran Nexus, and today I'm going to talk to you about hospital visits, specifically screenings at the hospital visits, but a little bit of both. Uh, first though, this is not legal, financial, or medical advice. This is literally educational video, and you want to treat this as a data point as you make your own decision. So having said that, hospital visits when it comes to VA disability claims, whether it's the VA or whether it's your private health care. Um, there's a lot of contention amongst like blogs, different YouTubers, whatever, about should you go to the hospital if you're filing a VA disability claim? Does it actually help you? Um, there's a lot of different opinions, right? Some of them are more credible than others, but here's how I approach it. I see VA disability from a more common sense, holistic point of view. And if you're disabled, well, it just makes sense to go to the hospital for one. And two, it also makes sense that while you're there, you're seeking health care, but you're also dealing with a disability side. Even though those hospitals that you're going to, the VA hospitals, they're not directly linked to the VA disability department, you know, like the VBA, the Benefits Administration, they're the Healthcare Administration but they still talk to each other when you file your claim. They're supposed to look at your VA records, for example. Most times they'll do it even in a fully developed claim, I've noticed. So because of that, I believe that the hospital appointments do matter. And if you remember what it was like being in the military, you had uniform inspections. And I was horrible at these. Like I couldn't I wasn't one of those guys that could look at a uniform and go like, oh, there's something wrong and this ribbon's upside down. But you can tell when something's off. <laughs> if everyone looks the same and there's like two people that look off, maybe because their you know, position's wrong, it's going to bother you, right? Like it's going to bother you. And that thing I'm talking about, that feeling of being bothered, you don't want the VA Raider to have that as they're, you know, making a decision on your claim. Now, they're supposed to be objective about everything. It's not supposed to be emotional, but if you're going for, let's say, because when we're talking about screenings, we're actually talking about mental health. Most times it's a mental health screening. And let's say you're at 50% for mental health disability and you're going for 100% and your records and your screenings all read that you're fine. Well, that's in my opinion, if, if I was a VA Raider, I'm supposed to look at your claim objectively, but in the back of my mind, I'd be like, what is this, right? Like you're 50%, you're going for 100 or higher, but then these say you're fine. So it doesn't mean you're going to lose the claim, right? Like other, other channels and stuff, they, they'll probably tell you that, hey, you still probably have a chance to win that. They're not supposed to like try to reduce you. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But from a common sense point of view, I, I still wouldn't want to submit a claim if I, all my records said I was better than I was two years ago. It just doesn't make sense. And when you're dealing with humans, uh, you always have to assume they're gonna react a certain way and it's probably gonna be true. So I don't want that Raider to have to fight against his feelings or her feelings. The feeling of what's wrong with this veteran's claim? Why does it say he's better? You're already fighting an uphill battle if your Raider is feeling that way about you, in my opinion. Again, this is my take on the situation. Now having said that, that's why I believe that going to the hospital still matters for multiple reasons. One, you're disabled. You should go to the hospital if you're disabled and get health care and treatment. So that's the first reason I think you should still go to the hospital, right? That's not medical advice. You make your own decision. But the second reason is when you go to the hospital, you may as well tell them um, what's wrong with you. But you just, again, for VA disability purposes, you should also report how bad your symptoms are if you know what the CFR says. You kind of knock out two birds with one stone. Um, and you should go every once in a while, right? You don't want big gaps in your, um, your record. So in this case, if you're going for a mental health claim and it's been four years since you've been to the hospital and you're going for an increase, you're not a liar. You might be worse, but they don't know on paper because there's a big gap and now there's some dissonance there with the person handling your claim, right? It's like, okay, well, why haven't you gotten to the hospital? See, those types of questions come up and that's what I don't want with my claim. I don't want them to have to question like that. I just want them to see a claim and say, all right, this makes a lot of sense, 
right? Like the, the veteran is saying one thing, all the stuff matches, everything looks good to me. That's the reaction I want from them pretty quick. But if it's like I've submitted something and they have all kinds of questions, like that, that's, you know, now they have to fight against that ill feeling about you to, to actually help you win the claim. I want them to just feel good from the start. Hope that makes sense so far. But now I want to talk about the screenings. So screenings, there's a lot of different ones and they're all specific to your diagnosed mental health disability. So depending on what that disability is, there's usually a screening associated with it. It's a multiple choice type of thing that says, hey, have you dealt with this in the last month? Uh, not at all, a little bit, a lot of it, or all the time, right? It's gonna sound something like that. Now, a lot of veterans, just like when we were in the military, we treat this like it's a waste of time. It's like, no, 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 I don't have that. Get me the hell out of here. That's how you treated your PHAs in the military. That's how you treated your post-deployment assessments. And that's how you treat it as a veteran. But what you're actually doing when you're not paying attention to those questions and answering properly, you're actually lying. A lot of people are worried about lying to the VA. Well, veterans do it all the time. They don't report how bad things actually are. So you're lying to the VA and you're lying to yourself because you need to tell them how bad things actually are. So your, your screenings actually show up in your records on your VA records and they're supposed to write down what your score is. Now, you know, when you submit a claim and let's say all your scores are negative, is that gonna cause you to lose your claim? Maybe not, but what it's gonna do is cause questions from that rater, right? That's just my opinion. I just want everything to be dressed right dressed when I submit a claim and it's calibrated to the truth I'm currently experiencing in my life at that time with that condition. So they have an accurate picture of what's going on. And when you don't take the hospital visits and the screenings seriously, um, that's one way to put it is like, they don't actually know what's wrong with you. And that's when they have to ask all these questions um, to figure it out, right? And if they're figuring it out and your, your claim looks wrong because you haven't been going to the hospital, well, that just creates questions that I think are not helpful for you. So how do you use this information? Well, go to the hospital, complain, get the health care, and take the screenings properly. And when you have enough, um, that's when I would go for my increase, let's say. Because you know, like today, maybe you are worse than what your rating says, but on paper, maybe not, right? Like it just doesn't look right on paper. So you gotta make things match up. In my opinion, that's what I would do. Um, so I hope you got something out of that video. A little bit everywhere, um, but this is one of those topics that I like to talk about, especially since there's new subscribers coming on the channel. They're not gonna go back 10 videos and look at the last time I discussed this. And so for the new folks here, that now they can hear the message the first time. So if you got something from that, like the video, tell your friends about the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care now.